Hi, I'm Tom Field, Vice President of Editorial with Information Security Media Group. I'm talking about behavioral analytics today. It's my pleasure to be talking to Ryan Wilk. He is the Director of Customer Success with New Data. Ryan, thanks for joining me today. No, thanks for having me. So, huge topic, behavioral analytics. What is sort of state of the art for organizations looking to enhance fraud prevention today? You know, it's really moving beyond the idea of looking for risk. Uh, risk is such a small part of your total population. You really want to find who your good customers are and identify your good customers, giving them a fantastic experience while being able to weed out what is that risk and just having it materialize itself uh, naturally. And where would you say that financial institutions are in general now when it comes to identifying that good customer? You know, I think they're getting there, but it's still going to take a lot of uh, forward momentum to get them there. Uh, right now, they're looking at some very basic things, username, password. Anyone can get those. It's very easy to pretend to be someone else. They're looking at some high-level things like device and connection, very binary, things that are, that are either correct or they're not correct. It's that gray area that gets very difficult, and it's trying to figure out who your customer is across multiple layers and multiple dimensions that, uh, that a lot of the banks need to get to to be able to identify their good customers regularly. Well, talk to me about some of the tools that help them to do that. And maybe explain this gray area a little bit better too. What, what's in that gray area that we need to see? No, sure. It's, it, the gray area is understanding your customer across session, across their lifetime, being able to aggregate their history, the history of how they interact, how they navigate the site, how they actually interact with the machine. To be able to look at that every time they come back to understand, is it still my good customer or has this person potentially deviated? As well as looking at their full population in aggregate to understand when potentially an emergent threat has appeared that, uh, that, that could potentially be spoofing or pretending to be their good customers. So you want to know things like when do they typically log on, what are the activities that they do, uh, what ATM would they typically use, are those the types of things you'd look at? No, absolutely, and even down to the point of looking at how they're interacting with the machine. So that, that's the real value of behavioral analytics and passive biometrics, is bringing that sense of reality into the machine. Just like if you were to walk into a brick and mortar store with, with my credit card and my ID, they'd probably say that's not you. It's trying to bring that value of actually being able to say at login, not only was the username and password correct, but was the actual input pattern, the deviation of the type speed, the pressure of the speed they type, the orientation of the mobile device that they're holding, the accelerometer readings, do all of those combined together to say that this truly is Ryan or is this an imposter trying to be Ryan? Good points. What are the tools that get us there? So my company offers a behavioral analytics suite that, uh, that does all of this, the passive biometrics, uh, device intelligence, connection intelligence, and is able to analyze this all in real time. And it's really taking those multi multiple layers and being able to understand all those layers of how a user's interacting, and then being able to understand that all in real time and do it in a dynamic way. So not just using simple linear regression to try to evaluate how that user's interacting, but bringing in the ideas of um, adaptive machine learning, machine learning that can actually update itself in real time based on emergent uh, threats and trends. I've got to think this could be overwhelming for some financial institutions. How do you leverage an investment in your systems with your existing security and anti-fraud technology? You know, we really view ourselves as additive. We're, we're a, a solution that doesn't really exist in the market today. We're adding in that additional layer of the who. Um, they had, like I was saying before, they have a, they have a lot of good technology that's doing that verification, that's doing the device intelligence, but they have no clue who that person is that's actually sitting behind the phone, sitting behind that PC. So it's bringing in that extra layer of understanding and being able to tell the bank with a with a very high degree of probability this is the person you're expecting it to be logging into this machine, and adding that on top of their existing fraud technology to be able to better understand what risk is, being able to move beyond kind of uh, I, I would say uh, uh, security theater and actually moving into to a true security solution that, uh, that is protecting their good customers. Well, Ryan, what then are the skills that I need within my financial institution to manage these systems, to leverage the intelligence, and, and to make a difference? You know, you need a group that's really committed to being able to analyze risk, um, a, a, a risk team, um, uh, people who can tune and analyze these tools to be able to understand what is risk and what is that lack of risk, being able to, uh, to actively give their good customers a good experience and being able to actively either analyze or stop bad actors from that come into their environment. And what do your customers report to you in terms of how they measure success? So they, new data provides back intelligence around that user. So we provide back probability scores to say, is it truly that person? And we also provide back uh, truth intelligence around the interaction. So we work with our customers to integrate our technology, integrate in our solution and, uh, and intelligence into, like you were saying, kind of the current stack they have to be able to enhance that stack and be able to show them how they can get the most value out of the product. 
Sounds fascinating, Ryan. I appreciate your time and your insight today. Absolutely, thank you. The topic has been behavioral analytics, and I've been speaking with Ryan Wilk of New Data. For Information Security Media Group, I'm Tom Field. Thank you very much.